All right, what I've got for you here is sort of a introduction to ecological pyramids, and, and we're going to talk, this all applies to ecology more so than, than human biology, and we'll get to that in a second. But uh, let me walk you through what I've got here. This says producers, producer level, primary consumer, and then secondary consumer. This says biomass. Biomass is basically the weight of all the living things in that category. So mass is different than weight. You remember that from physics, but in this case, we're going to call it all weight. Okay. And this says population or number of individuals. And what you see here are the same ecosystems. So I was uh, out by Turner and I was walking down an alley. There's, there's an alleyway that goes between houses. Um, off of Perry Road and there's a, a lot of vegetation back there and I was just sort of exploring and there's a, an area where there's like three or four maybe five huge huge old oak trees and I sat there for a minute and I was watching and, the, and it has attracted all sorts of birds I saw woodpeckers I saw blue jays and I saw half a dozen different songbirds and things flying about and there was even a, uh, a black crowned night heron that was uh, sitting in one of the trees probably just nesting there, not feeding there, but you get the idea. And I'm sure that there's owls that come and go and hawks that come and go as well. So if we were to take a look at that ecosystem on two different charts, here's what we would see. If we were to look at mass, those trees are, are colossal. Each one of those trees is probably 15 tons a piece. And there's five of them, so by weight, it's colossal. Now, if we were to take all the primary consumers, which is going to be insects, every single moth that comes and goes, every ant that lives there, all the worms, little grub worms that live inside the tree that the woodpecker is getting at. If we were to take all those organisms, they would weigh significantly less than the trees, but there would be a whole lot more of them. Okay, This suggests there's not very many of them, but they're huge. They don't weigh very much, but there's a ton of them. Okay, that's what these two charts are showing you. And if we go to secondary consumers, there are, you know, if we were to take all the birds and stuff, birds don't weigh very much. If we were to take the birds and stuff that come through there, it would weigh less than the insects. It would have to. So they don't weigh very much. But there is more of them than the trees. So if you were to look just at this, you'd say, well, how in the world do we have more secondary consumers than producers? But that's not what's, what, what's really being shown to you here because those producers are huge, 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 huge producers. So it seems misleading. Now, if we were to take a look at, say, an ocean ecosystem where there's phytoplankton, if we were to take the weight of all the phytoplankton, all the kelp, all the other producers, all the seagrass, seaweed, and everything else, then the weight would be huge absolutely huge and in some places in the ocean where the because the net primary productivity of the ocean is relatively low and we'll talk about that later because that's relatively low there are going to be places in the ocean where there's tons of plankton just no fish there that particular minute maybe an occasional uh you know open ocean fish or uh, some kind of filter feeder or something maybe some jellyfish that move through but they, they don't weigh anything and so it'll look like all these producers and there's nothing living there. Well, that's not entirely the case because those organisms move around and they migrate and everything else. If we were to take a look at one particular location, you can't look at one thing. You can't look at just biomass. You can't look at just population. You have to look all at all of it all at the same time in order to get the complete picture of what you're seeing in that ecosystem.